One of life's great phenomenons made a spectacular and rare appearance across UK skies last night. And this lunchtime, the Premier League's Northern Lights are on show in the capital. It's a chance and he slips it in. And he... What a brilliant goal that is. Gvardio has come from nowhere. They're just taking the mickey, really. What is it, 65%? It feels like way more than that. On the charge towards the edge of the penalty here. Bernardo Silva sliding challenge. But Bellini is a good one. But it comes to Phil Foden. Who else? Silva's ball in. Akanji goes up for it. And poked home by Gvardio at the back post. An outstretched boot into the back of the net. And it's a third for Manchester City. Cuts it back towards Alvarez, who does get him first with the shot. He's caught by Diop. That's a penalty. And it's a red card for Diop because it's a second yellow in front of those City fans. Right footed, he sends the keeper the wrong way. It's four again for Manchester City. For City, of course, they're, they're at another level to everybody else. Nonetheless, they're totally too good for the Premier League. Will you be watching Manchester United Arsenal tomorrow? A lot of job to do with the sports. A lot of job. I will know the result, but a lot of sports to do. The goal difference rises again. It's full time at Craven Cottage. It's Fulham nil. Manchester City four. Man City back on top of the Premier League. Just throws the ball back into Arsenal's court, meaning they've got to win today at Manchester United. Vardiol two, Foden and Alvarez. The fleet footed Vardiol, unbelievable, waltzing round Fulham defenders like they weren't there. And Man City play their extra game in hand on Tuesday against Spurs. That's live on Talk Sport. At 8 o'clock on Tuesday night, that'll be presented by Adrian Durham with commentary from Sam Matterface and former England defender Danny Mills. Man City, I mean, what can you say? It's easy for them, isn't it, Henry? It was a window on why they are serial champions. Obviously, Arsenal are going to push them all the way. But Gvardiol, you just look at the recruitment, the best uh, centre-back at the World Cup, as we saw, he was absolutely except outstanding. Except for when Messi went round except him. Except when Messi went, went round him. But look, Messi can do that to anyone. Um, and he's, he's now, you can just see how Pep has improved him. Not simply, not really technically, but tactically. He's made him more of a versatile, more of an effective player. And he was a very effective player beforehand. At, but he's not at playing left his back and position. left wing. <laughs> I know. I mean, it is, it is absolutely extraordinary. But that's what Pep does to... To, to, to players he develops them and then you saw the other side of the winning mentality of of Pep Guardiola's team when Guardiola who was on two you know he scored two he would have been the first defender in the Premier League era to, to score a hat trick. trick he'd never scored a hat trick before it would have been a big moment and he automatically handed the ball to Julian Alvarez who with Haaland off was, was the next penalty designated penalty taker and it was all about the team so these are talented individuals doing everything for the collective and it was all about the focus was on whittling down Arsenal's goal difference and you just thought wow this is the mentality of champions and of course another goal for Foden we're just sort of getting used to this now yeah Phil Foden scored another one yeah he's player of the year yeah all right I mean, just, did, did you vote for him as football I did year? yeah I did as well I mean it's it's obviously even though you wanted to wait two weeks to yeah, see yeah but the title. No, I totally understand why the, the, you know the FW doesn't and it was interesting to see the Premier League ones that were announced during the uh, the, the week and you would just assume he would he, he would absolutely feature high on that slightly surprised that Anthony Gordon didn't feature it either in the young ones um, from your famous Club, but yes, I know where he's Foden. from. Have you got him down for the Euros, Anthony Gordon? Yeah, it's a bit of a side issue. That I just well, wonder. no, it's, well, it's not so much of a side issue because it's. Um, well, I was just coming back on the train from Scotland, and obviously, loads of Newcastle fans got on at Newcastle. Surprise, surprise! After the draw, and we're sort of talking about Anthony Gordon, how good he is. And I was talking to, to some fans. So, who who is your Player of the year, club player of the year. Is it Isaac? Is it Grash? And they all pretty much to a man said uh, Anthony Gordon. So look, he'll go to the Euros. He provides, particularly with 26, he provides a fantastic outlet. Gareth Southgate's been watching him closely, knows what he can do. And also, they've been looking at how good he is off the pitch as well, because uh, Southgate in England and the FA love a good tourist, and Anthony Gordon's that. You love a good tourist as well. You think they're important. I, well, I do. I do, particularly with 26, when you've got, you know, probably about five or six players who may not play. You know, you mm. almost need that sort of Connor Cody type character, not that he's in contention now, but th that sort of mentality to be good around the camp and support the starters. Just moving on, we skipped over uh, the fact uh, Chelsea beat Nottingham Forest yesterday as we were talking about the relegation, but... What are you making of Potch's statements and Bo Bowley saying they're playing beautiful football, just how I envisaged it, that's what I expected them to play like, as he said. And then Potch Dino sort of indicating that, well, you know, I might stay, might not. Do you know what? I, you know I love social media and by 6.30 it was Potch out. 
and then sort of shortly afterwards last night it was it was Poch in I mean he's getting a tune out of Mudrick he's dealing with an imbalanced squad in terms of the sort of lack of experience he's then got to deal with Thiago Silva uh, moving back to Brazil he's you know there've been complications at or sort of uncertainty around the club Injuries, obviously, and you, it was so good to see Reese James sort of coming back. Still, the absence of a centre forward, a real sort of true finish. Although Nicholas Jackson is absolutely training on, he's he's young and he's, he's improving, and he took his header well. But again, fantastic cross from Reese James. I think Potch is doing a fantastic job. We know from his career in English football at Southampton, at Tottenham, how he develops players. He improves them with the quality of his coaching, and he's got young players, and he can do he can absolutely do that. I think Chelsea's trajectory, particularly under Pochettino, is is outstanding. So I understand the Tottenham connection. I know that's an issue with some fans, but really that should fade away into the background. And really, Pochettino, if there are any sort of Tottenham-related questions in press conferences, just sort of yeah, but duck he doesn't them a fast he doesn't move. duck them. He, I he, know. He I think that's them head on, and he, he sort of said, "Well, obviously Tottenham's my club because I was there for ages, and we did this but, and this and that. Why would you?" But do read that? the room. That doesn't go down well on the shed. Or the Matthew Harding up and lower. <laughs> I mean, it's just, and you know, I understand he's wanting to show respect for Tottenham Hotspur, but you know, it's all about Chelsea. And look, he's got a good future at Chelsea with these young players. I mean, Cole Palmer's passing yesterday, mm. that ball through to Mudrick. I mean, very few players in the world could play that sort of eye of a needle pass. So he's got fantastic players. He's got Rhys James coming back. He's got Malagusta who's been playing well. How do you juggle the right back issue? Mm. I mean, he's got two exceptional right backs there. So look, things are, are looking good, but I, I would be amazed if there's any uncertainty about his future. I mean, I keep reading headlines and obviously they're well sourced, but what, but why? I because mean, he puts the doubts there as well, I think. Because does he? he himself, well, just the way he's talking. Well, the, maybe, he want, maybe he just wants a little love. bit of love. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, I, he maybe wants a little bit more love, but he's absolutely the right man to take them forward. Now, one manager who is leaving, uh, David Moyes, had his home farewell yesterday. We've we've often joked on this programme, is it a Moyes out week, is it a Moyes in week this week? And finally he's going, and it seems, let's be honest, with no acrimony on either side. It seems to be an agreed parting of the ways, this one. Yeah, it's an agreed parting of the ways, and I'm glad that he's been given the credit and the support and the salute that he deserves. I mean, I understand the sort of frustration about some of the quality of the football, but ultimately they'll remember the great moments and the fact that only three West Ham managers in their long history have have lifted those sort of trophies, and he's one of them. So, I mean, it's just outstanding from from Moyes. He did a good job there. Well, Karen Brady, uh, the son this week, said he'd be remembered as one of the great West Ham managers and should be up there, and you might say, well, why why is he going then? And and he also had a great reception yesterday at the ground with a few fans possibly feeling a little guilty that they give him. No, I think that's a West Ham thing. I think that's a fans thing. It's a West thing. Ham and, thing. Well, a West Ham thing. It's a fans thing. It's a you know they know that he was going. So whether they were feeling guilty of having to have done Moyes out stuff in the past, they actually wanted to show you know behave with with dignity and a bit of class and to salute him on his way out. Because I think you know when you step back, I think the West Ham fans will appreciate exactly what he's done for them. He also the family still lives in Lancashire and still wants to stay up in Lancashire. And that's when you're away from home for four and a half years. That's a that's a long time, and it's a fair old hike back up there all the time. And I don't think we always appreciate, maybe, for managers, how much time they do spend away from family. And for him, probably nice if he could get a job up north, levelling up. Yeah, levelling up. I mean, maybe, I mean, I was listening to Tony Cascarino earlier, and he was talking about the, the Republic of Ireland job. And m- maybe that, but I don't know, just Moyes, I can just sort of see, still see him going into a training ground. He's still got that fire in him, even though he's done what, thousand odd games. Um, but look, he's not the only manager who, who lives away from his family. And I, it no, is it is a pressure on them. And I understand that sort of dynamic. But he is he's a good manager and he will be in demand. Where do you think he might end up? I mean, he's a mid-table Premier League manager. So, you know... Look at a mid-table team who probably aren't looking for a new manager at the I, moment. I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, you know, whatever happens next season, but at November, December, he'll get a call. And um, We were talking about uh, Hattrick def- 
defenders who might have scored hat-tricks, Vardial would have been come the first to do it. Um, this is anonymous. It says, hello, correction for you. Steve Watson, he Everton wasn't fullback, a scored a hat-trick for Leeds. I was just about to say, Sorry. they clarified that on the telly yesterday, saying he wasn't playing in defence that day. He was playing in midfield. So we still don't have a defender who scored a hat-trick. Steve Watson, very good player. He used to play for my, yeah, my lads as well. Team. And did the famous, did you ever see him do the throw-in where he does a forward roll oh. <laughs> throw-in and fling it? It didn't quite work out. He fell over when he tried to do it. Was probably. he another Wolves End Boys He was club? a Wolves End Boys was club, he? I think. Yeah? Yes, I believe, I believe he was. But uh, a fine player indeed. And uh, anyway, just back. Well done, David Moyes. Hope it all works out and that uh, he's back in the game soon. And he will be on Talk Sport. On AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.